marvellous Mrs Thatcher, and we say that... Good evening, Mr Good evening, here I am outside Parliament. Today, John Sherwin Gomer again put his foot and mouth in it when he said that eating British beef was far safer than living in Shellafield. This prompted the MP for Shellafield to say that after his workload had increased in the area, he was grateful of the extra pair of hands. <laughs> and now, now it's over to the House for a statement from Mr Gomer. Mr Speaker, the fuss over mad cow disease is absolutely blown out of all proportion. You can't have your mental health affected by eating British <laughs> beef. <laughs> my, my, my wife eats it, my children eat it. Daddy, daddy. <laughs> and I eat it. <laughs> scramble, scramble, bandits at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so there's absolutely nothing to worry about. And I think the situation was properly summarised by the... Uh, by the chief medical officer who said, Tuzzy Filarious! <laughs> well, well, things have been uh, happening very badly in show business this week. Jim Henson died, Sammy Davis Jr. died, and Max Wall died. Jim Davidson didn't. Sod's law, I suppose. <laughs> which, which leads me on to Sylvester Stallone's new movie. In his quest to be taken more seriously, he's to play Puccini in a new film of the composer's life. Sylvester, uh, Puccini isn't the first uh, name that comes to mind when we think of your work to date. Yeah, well, I thought it was a pretty good movie, like, because uh, there's this scene where I'm in, a, I'm in a palace and I'm surrounded by courtiers and aristocrats and I give a performance to the Prince of Norway and then I die through a plate glass window with a handheld rocket launcher and napalm a whole goddamn village, man. <laughs> yes, but uh, Puccini didn't actually do that. Yeah, well, uh, Puccini sucks. That's well, uh, uh, as someone once said, and it may have been me, you're about as much used to classical music as Jeremy Beadle is to investigative journalism. <laughs> Which leads me on to Alan Bennett, who, after ten great years at the National Theatre, is to launch his Hollywood career with a new movie about cops. He was no ordinary cop. The game was the same, but the rules were different. Because from nine to five, at Safeways, Alan Bennett is store detective. <laughs> with his partner, Clint Eastwood. Okay, Alan, we've got to clean this scum from the supermarket and put a stop to this crime. Yes, it's a game of intrigue, double bluff. <laughs> and, the, and the systematic theft of Gary Baldy and Hobnob Biscuits. <laughs> Alan, I think we've got us a shopping violation over at the Express checkout. Where are you? I'm at the pick and mix, but I'm on my way. <laughs> okay, buddy, this is... This is the most powerful pricing gun in the world. You see that sign? It says 12 items or less. You gotta ask yourself a question. How many items in the basket? Is it 12 or 13? Think you can go for the eggs in time? Yeah, go ahead. Make my omelet. And that leads us straight on to... Yes, I think we're getting an interruption from Crime Watch Update. Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Update. This is the only programme in the country where we still refer to policemen as bobbies. And now, a quick word from our friendly policeman. Thanks, Nick. Um, not a lot to say today apart from project a very positive and, let's face it, pretty unrealistic image of the police. Um, that's all for me. Thanks, friendly policeman. And before we go, there is a lot of crime in this programme, a lot of violent crime. Please, if you're alone, living on your own, and a bit worried, please, please remember. Oh! Sorry, I just had a beef sandwich. That's all from me. My name's Steve Coon. Good night. Yeah! Oh, Steve Coon in there. A man of lots and lots of voices. Well, I've fixed myself up a bit of television at the end of this series. Actually. I'm involved in a programme with Jimmy Savile about information technology. It's called Jim'll Fax It. <laughs>